A major rail strike looms on the horizon while Biden scrambles to avert a shutdown. Today on Political Access, we're going to look a little bit more into this strike. Mostly we're going to talk about why it should not be happening. So I've got some articles pulled up here that discuss the timeline. So you can read about this strike if you're unfamiliar. But there will be a December 9th shutdown if there is not an agreement reached in time. And I don't know all the specifics of each demand, but my understanding is they're actually pretty basic. And the main sticking point are paid sick days off. And apparently they already have none. Now I'm not going to pretend to know what it's like to be a railway worker, but having zero paid sick days off? I don't even know how that's possible this day and age. Getting at least a few sick days off, if not a week or two of vacation time a year, that's minimal stuff. And I think a lot of us take it for granted not knowing what's going on with a lot of these workers and how a lot of the underlying economy functions. But these workers having no time is baffling to me. And I can't understand how the rail bosses would push back on that. Nobody in the public would support no sick days off. Nobody. So if this gets exposed and gets enough coverage in the media, there's no way they're going to win that argument. Now, as for Biden, I understand he wants to avert a shutdown. It would really hurt the economy. But I think the irony, or perhaps the hypocrisy, is Biden is supposed to be extremely union-friendly. So why he's not coming out full-throated in favor of these workers, or at least one or two steps under that, that looks really hypocritical and rather pathetic, I'd say, because this is low-hanging fruit to at least say we've got to get these workers some sick time off. And you can discuss all the other terms they want, wage increases, safety-related concerns, that's probably all relevant as well. But I would think Biden would have a layup here and they would come out for these workers and they would say, we got your back. So if there's talk about having Congress just pass a deal and force through a deal that doesn't have some of these basics like the paid sick time off, that I think is really astounding. And I don't see how it's not actually cruel. But I don't know how many of these workers voted for Biden. I'm sure a lot of them did unenthusiastically. But this is a complete slap in the face. And Democrats, I think, talk a big game on labor and unions, and they do deliver here and there on the edges. But then when it comes time to really back up these unions and working class issues, it seems like they fold. Or they have some roundabout way where it actually isn't really going to help the people, but they try to make it look like they did, while simultaneously just saying the Republicans are worse. Now, as for the Republicans, they probably are worse on a lot of these economic issues. I've said that in previous videos. But this is a golden opportunity for the Republicans to jump out and say, hey, we support this. Maybe we don't support everything, but getting some paid sick time off, that's the least we can do, considering it's the U.S. So if Republicans don't want that opportunity, well, I think they're really blowing it. And I think they're blowing it on two fronts. One, to take a swipe at Biden, which I'm sure they want to do. And number two to continue to bolster their appeal to the working class, which a lot of them have actually shifted away from the Democrats over the last couple of cycles. So this could be a time to have some messaging around how you've got their backs on a couple of really, really low-time issues that anybody would support. Now, how about the so-called progressives in the House, as well as Bernie Sanders in the Senate? Now, I haven't looked up all of their statements or their tweets, but from what I can tell, before they got into office and at the beginning of them getting into office, they talked up a big game on workers' rights, going against corporations and big business, taxing the rich, and more economic populism. But now, once they've been in office for a little while, it seems like they've kind of clammed up on a lot of these issues. And I get it, they don't want to rock the boat, which is the establishment, and there's a lot more of the establishment than there are of the progressives. But that was the whole point of electing people who are anti-establishment and on the outside. They were supposed to shake it up. And instead of shaking it up, all they've done is cozy up and expose that your integrity has a price. And if when the time comes for you to stick up on your core principles and values, you end up folding, well, then at that point, you've become the establishment. Now, I think this happens on both sides. There's an appeal to being an outsider and anti-establishment. And sometimes you get elected, but then once you get in there, it's a lot harder than it seems. And it's much easier to just give the illusion that you're against the establishment. But your voting record will speak volumes. And the establishment will keep on doing what it does. And that is mostly serving the corporate interests. The only hope is that there will be primaries and there will be general elections. And a lot of these candidates that people don't like will end up losing. But I think a lot of people have lost faith in that. It's just very difficult to take down someone on the inside. They will smear you. They'll dig up anything they can about you or your past. The media will be on their side. Whether you're on the left or the right, 
That is what will happen. We see it all the time with people on the right. Anti-establishment, pro-Trump candidates, all of the worst things about them get highlighted and amplified, and none of their best things get any spotlighting. Perhaps the best thing about them is they would be anti-establishment, and I think that is a good thing. Now, it doesn't mean every establishment position is wrong. Obviously, that's not true. But I do think that's why someone like Donald Trump got elected in the first place. People were tired of the two-party system just not really delivering for everyday American citizens. So anyway, we'll see what happens with this rail strike. But I think the media coverage should be squarely on Biden and the Democrats looking like total idiots on this, as this is one of the issues they pride themselves on, and they're completely falling flat. But also the Republicans, they're going to squander another opportunity, like they do almost every time. And in the end, it'll be more the status quo, and whatever the media decides to cover, that's the impression the American people will get. And there's plenty of stories out there that will never get any attention. And whatever narratives they want to keep going with, those are the ones we're going to keep hearing about. And that's unfortunate, but that's the way I see it. But maybe you have a different opinion. So let me know in the comments, what do you think about this rail strike? What do you think about paid sick time off? Do you think the Democrats are blowing this opportunity? Do you think the Republicans... They should be seizing on this opportunity. Let me know down below. And if you enjoy this channel, as always on your way out, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next video.